Hello fellow humans, Chris here. I'm uh, taking the advantage of this beautiful day and uh, doing a quick video out here in my little nature retreat. I just wanted to do a discussion really quickly on some thoughts about um, the football games yesterday. So yesterday was Thanksgiving and I'm not really a huge sports guy as much as I used to be. I used, used to follow sports a little bit more closely. Uh, lately, last couple of years, I just haven't had the same interest in it. But I do typically watch the games, the big games, and pretty much always watch the Thanksgiving games. We always have a couple of football games on Thanksgiving. We were watching the uh, Redskins game, or Washington football team game, uh, versus the Cowboys. And... The topic came up of them changing their name. So they used to be the Washington Redskins, now they are the Washington football team. And a discussion came up on them changing their name and the reason for it. And of course there's a long history going on there. There's actually been there's been controversy with that name going back even since the sixties. So it's not a new thing, but it's Something that just happened, the owner finally decided to change it after pressure, um, after what happened with George Floyd over the summer. And that kind of bringing to light racial disparity and um, even in current, present day. So that's kind of a lot of what went into it. Um, what caught my interest was somebody that I was having Thanksgiving with. We had kind of a pre-quarantine period of time and then sort of a COVID-esque uh, Thanksgiving get-together. Um, so somebody that I haven't really hung out with as much as I used to um, and we had this discussion about them changing the name and um, the concept of offensive came up and his his point seemed to be that we can make anything offensive these days. And he started kind of just going on about different things. You know, two-minute warning is offensive because that's the warning means the warning that the slave owner would have given to their slave. Just ridiculous stuff like that. And I take it with a grain of salt. And mostly it's kind of just done in jest. But I do think that it's kind of a moment to explore a little bit. Um... Because it, it just got me to thinking about the reasons why we do things, the reasons why we stop saying certain things, stop using certain phrases. So I kind of looked more into the issue of Redskins particularly. And what I found was that there's not any one major consensus, even within the Native American community. Um, with polling, it looks like now there is a very slim majority of Native Americans who are against the use of the word redskin. Um, but even there, it's it's that's not a huge majority. And um, a lot of the people just don't really feel super strong about it, but some people do. But what got me to thinking about it was this sort of sweeping stroke about we can just make anything offensive. And there was this kind of frustration almost to it, the idea that we just change all these words, change these names, because people are getting offended for no reason, you know, according to his thinking. So again, I, I looked into the term and, you know, right off the bat, the reason why redskin is considered offensive just on a surface level is because it is distinguishing an us and them mentality. You know, they have redskin. And in fact, why it was, why they used redskin was to differentiate, and I'm talking about pilgrims, I'm talking about when we first colonized the states on the East Coast, they started using the term redskins to differentiate them from Africans that, that they had brought over. Slaves, who are black. So you can't call them black skin, so they call them redskin. Uh, even though that's not, obviously, particularly even accurate description, but that's kind of where it started. So right off the bat, it's, it's, a, it's an ugly... Um, or origin. And I read more into it over the history of it and it got adopted in different uses, different contexts over time. 
and and some positive, some negative. You know, I, I can acknowledge that a lot of the times when it was used, it wasn't used specifically for uh, an insulting reason, at least according to the history that I read. Some of it may even have been used within the Native American culture themselves for a myriad of reasons. Again, this is beyond my scope of knowledge or even the purpose of this video. But one thing that did stick out to me was uh, an uh, 1836 article in uh, the Minneapolis Republican uh, newspaper. And in it, it was announcing rewards for the scalped heads of Indians. Redskin. So there's some, a lot of speculation that there's a connection there with Redskin and the scalped bloody head of uh, Indians. And specifically what it said, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't have the article in front of me, but it was saying that the reward for uh, an Indian sent to purgatory has gone up to $200. This dollar amount is worth more than all the dead corpses of the Indians um, east of the, uh, Minneapolis combined. Again, I'm paraphrasing. I don't have it in front of me, but that's, that's one that really stuck out to me reading that. And so the thing I took away from all of this collectively is that it's probably a word we shouldn't be saying anymore. And I, I really, I get concerned a lot of the times when people have this sweeping stroke of like, well, that's offensive. We can make anything offensive. You know, it's not always about offensiveness on a surface level. It's not always about hurting somebody's feelings. You know, I kind of think of when we talk about doing away with the Confederate statues. Sometimes we just don't want to associate that with us anymore. We don't. We want to move past. We want to progress past some of our ugly histories. Now, we forget about that? No. I think it's really important that we don't. Because, you know, if you don't learn from history, you're bound to repeat it. And, and we do have to acknowledge the evils of our past, which we, we really st even still haven't fully done. But I think part of that is a sense of atonement, and that can't happen without the, the ceasing to persist in using just ugly language that has certain just horrible context to it. And I go back to kind of what I said before in the video about doing good deeds. Context is everything. Context is really important. You know, any word is only as good or bad as the message around it. So has the term been used in the past for perhaps non-oppressive or non-ugly things? Maybe. And I think that the percentages of uh, natives today who are and are not offended by the word kind of points to that, that it's not necessarily a huge uh, controversial uh, controversial point one way or the other, as in not being one-sided. Where I can think of other words, other slurs today that, that are much more one-sided. So I think that that's kind of the point I'm coming around to, is that there's a context to all this, and we don't always have to be concerned with our feelings getting hurt. We just want to be better. And we want to stop using outdated terms. And I think that's an important distinction because you get painted with this uh, brush of being a snowflake or being, you know, some kind of a pansy who needs a safe space, which I'm obviously, I'm speaking to a specific type of person of thinking that doesn't represent me or what I think. Um, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond the feeling offended or getting your feelings hurt. I just think it's important to remember that, that uh, there's reasons to do away with the, the ugly terms because as others have said, um, 
dialogue. Um, I think that words and rhetoric have meaning and um, can lead to good or bad action. Not necessarily even in the intent of the person using them, but the people receiving the message. And I think that now more than ever, uh, we need unity more than division because God knows we've got enough division to deal with as it is. So I do think that's a good thing and I think that it's important to acknowledge that there are more academic reasons that go into things um, to, to doing away with words. People can and are and probably should be offended to a certain extent by the use of that word as, as many others that have become outdated but it but there's a reason for that offensiveness and um, that reason from a logical for a progressive standpoint is really the, the reason why we should stop using them we want to be better than that and that starts with rhetoric that starts with um, communication and language so that's all I was thinking about uh, I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving, stayed safe, healthy, and uh, be sure to check out the live stream tomorrow with me and Davide. I'm super excited about that. Uh, we'll be answering questions. Hopefully, anybody that was on our live stream last weekend, you know, we did touch on COVID and some things came up that I did mention that Davide would be a better source than myself. So please bring some questions. I really hope it, hope you do check it out and enjoy it and have a blessed rest of your day and I'll talk be talking to y'all again really soon uh, be sure to like and subscribe uh, I don't usually ask that um, but uh, I've been kind of um, I've been I've been pleasantly surprised lately that we've been able to pick up more subscribers and uh, that makes me feel good that that we're able to share messages that uh, people are interested in hearing um, but if you like and subscribe then um, that helps give me motivation to see what people like listening to more than others because I you know God knows I can talk about a lot a lot of different stuff and I can ramble so um, or just be sure to leave me a comment and just let me know what you think um, I will talk to you all again really soon hope you have a great rest of your day and remember don't be afraid to question the consensus